afternoon, Tony. Well, let's take a look at the strides, first of all, that EcoBank Transnational is making in terms of enhancing its regional footprint, of which you, of course, form a part. Thank you very much. Um, what EcoBank, as part of the Vara strategy, was um, to create a regional print, footprint across Africa, like you are aware, spreading over uh, 29 countries in Africa. And in particular, what we've done in the East African community is to uh, focus on most all the countries in East African community, countries of Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya, and pretty much covered. And the idea is to be able to take uh, our customers out to the region, to be able to expand their businesses across the region and effectively ensure some level of integration amongst uh, our clients. With that being the strategy right now, what growth are you boasting in the East African region at the moment where last year certainly banking results weren't as impressive as we've gotten used to out of the East African region? Like you, you'll be aware, the effects of the global crisis and some of the political crisis in Kenya affected especially Kenya and um, the sub-region uh, for last year. And um, the effects are beginning to win, and we're going to see recovery in the banking industry. So uh, going forward from this year, we're going to see some recoveries coming up. The results that will be announced as we expect this year for last year's result might not be as impressive as previous years. But um, we see the sign that there are going to be recoveries coming up in the region. And um, with the community coming together and the common market taking place, we're going to see expanded market, which is going to enable banks to be able to move across borders to be able to expand their business frontier. Of course, when it comes to that balance sheet of key focus when we're, uh, when we're unpacking it is level of impairments, non-performing loans as, a, as well. I mean, it's been the Achilles heel of banks globally uh, for such a long time. Now, when it comes to levels of impairments, I mean, what are we looking at from your side? Yeah, it's essentially the, the effect of the crisis also affected the business of most of our clients and most, uh, most other banks are experiencing that. Most businesses are experiencing difficult times and the impact is a lot of them are failing on their obligations as to repaying their loans. So you begin to see a lot of, um, um, a lot of additional provisions coming in over the place. So in terms of impairment, we see higher figures coming out. Um, that's going to impact heavily across the performance of banks across the region. and. In particular, too, we too uh, we, we, we were a bit affected too in our own way, and we expect that based on what has happened in last experience, that this year going forward things will go a little bit better. Have we seen a change or shift in your lending criteria and your risk mitigating strategy in this context, Tony? Now, what, of course, based on the experience over the years, um, in terms of our risk profile, we we'll profile them accordingly, and them. Um, what we've done now is putting in some mitigating factors to ensure that why you're still doing business in some risky areas, but the mitigating factors will enable you to be able to um, avoid some unreasonable risk. And what we've done so far, targeting the market and segmenting the market, there's some, market, some areas we know that are no-go areas based on previous experience. And um, we're going to focus essentially on areas where we think fall within our risk acceptance criteria going forward. Well, lending rates have been a big issue, especially in Kenya. I mean, we know that banks' lending rates sit at around about 14%, while we've got the CBK uh, having dropped its interest rate uh, to 7%. We know that the Central Bank of Kenya has been encouraging banks uh, to actually lower their rates in tandem here. Uh, what's your opinion in that regard? Well, as we see, it's um, a good um, way to go, but you, if you are, like you are aware, the interest rate is a factor, has several factors responsible in terms of deposit rates and what turns out to be lending rate. Um, there's been a lot of pressure on lending rates, bringing down lending rates, but again, on the deposit side, you have the wholesale deposit still attracting high rates. Why? Because they still control a greater part of the market and uh, the pressure is there for them to be able to ask for higher rates, and this essentially is translated into higher lending rates. The banks have taken a cue from what the CBK is doing and the direction the CBK is providing, which is clear. Uh, but I see it as um, a gradual process that is going to take place because you need to have all the even deposit, uh, deposit rates going down to be able to translate that to benefits in the lending rate. To, so to enhance that, grow, uh, that customer base and attract your deposits your way, let's explore some of the synergies you're looking at at the moment. Now we, we look, okay, now for part of us, for 
example, specifically, we had uh, uh, embarked on branch expansion in last year, one year to be able to reach out to the greater part and where we think we'll be able to mobilize cheaper deposits from the, a lot of the unbanked so that that will translate into lower cost of funds to enable us on lend um, to other clients at a lower rate. So in terms of synergy, we look at mobilizing firms from the retail, from the consumer side, uh, down to them, and then be able to lend onto the corporate so to ensure that across the board, we have relatively lower cost of funds, which would translate to uh, lower interest rates. Well, to enhance this, uh, this growth, we've seen the group adopt quite an interesting strategy, extending uh, business beyond borders first with South Africa. I mean, run us through what uh, level operations uh, you envisage in South Africa. Now, what, what we have in South Africa is a rep office, representative office, uh, which is not going to be a full-fledged banking operations. Like you are aware, we have this strategic alliance with NetBank, mm -hmm. which enables NetBank to take care of our uh, clients in, uh, in South Africa. So the office we have in South Africa is basically going to be a rep office that's going to liaise with um, our clients there and then liaise them essentially with ne our NetBank partners to be able to show that we, we service our clients very well in uh, South Africa. That's not the only partnership uh, you've uh, taken on. I mean, it extends to Asia as well. We've seen you partnering with the Bank of China, and it's certainly stolen headlines over the recent past, uh, putting a spotlight on trade finance in particular. How do you see that relationship growing? Oh, we see that, uh, we, we, like you're aware, you are a lot of trade going on between Africa and China. And um, it's increasingly, every, uh, the figures are going up on, every, on a daily basis. And we see that partnership with them, enabling them to finance some of these imports into Africa. Having the idea is to be able to have a DEX of Bank of China in most Africa, most um, Eco Bank branches, so that we're able to do business and serve our clients that need to do business in China and vice versa. That just two partners that you've highlighted for now. I mean, are you open to exploring synergies with various other globes, uh, other banks across the globe? Definitely. Uh, part of our overall strategy is to go into the strategic partners all over and be able to ensure that the essence for us here in everything is to focus on our clients, to be able to make um, accessibility for our clients across the globe very, very easy. So we're going to go into several partnerships, several alliances to make um, accessibility to funds, accessibility to uh, banking services across the globe uh, easy for our clients. Well, all of that is underway. We've got raptions uh, in Nigeria, as you're well aware of. And, of course, we had rapid expansion in Nigeria, having highlighted EcoBank Nigeria's size relative to the group and uh, the significant impact deterioration uh, in EcoBank Nigeria's fundamentals on ETI Group's performance as a whole moving forward, its liquidity and the support that uh, can be provided by, uh, by that uh, parent company. Does that affect your operations at all, Tony? Well, um, Nigeria is like a country, like um, you have Kenya and any other country. Um, the operations, what happened in Nigeria, of course, had been contained, essentially. And for Ecobank, Ecobank uh, Nigeria came as one of the banks that was able to pull through without much uh, of an issue. Now, in terms of the performance on the group, like you said, a, a significant performance uh, impact on the group. But that essentially does not translate into the performance in all the other affiliates because most affiliates are standalone on their own and they operate essentially as uh, different entities that is now um, consolidated into the group.